गुड आफ्टरनून टू ऑल ऑफ यू गुड आफ्टरनून मनु आई होप यू ऑल हैव हैड योर लंच और यू मे हैव आफ्टर दिस क्लास लेट्स स्टार्ट विद दिस क्लास नाउ एज वी हैड डिस्कस्ड वी आर टूवर्ड्स द लैग एंड ऑफ आवर कोर्स लास्ट class last two lectures i took up some fundamental ideas from morphological image processing and this lecture and the next lecture i am going to talk about some fundamental ideas in image segmentation in fact for this part there are many things that we have already done in the earlier chapter but under a different heading so we had done it under image restoration etc like how do you detect a point how do you detect a line and how do you detect an edge so this is the first part of the image segmentation just that many of these ideas we have developed earlier and already worked upon just that we are going to see them in a new light today also the other idea that i am going to talk more in detail in the next class is the concept of thresholding and again that we have spoken of earlier but we will extend it a little bit so yes that topic of segmentation conceptually does not have any new thing you are revisiting the old ideas but in greater depth and detail which is very helpful so let's go ahead with this part of segmentation lecture so what is image segmentation as the name suggests it is dividing the image to segment means to divide to cut into pieces so segmentation image segmentation means you are dividing the image into components or identifying different components the fundamental problem in segmentation is to partition an image into regions that satisfy the preceding conditions so yes you have to divide the image but when you divide the image obviously there has to be a purpose there has to be a condition that should indicate that purpose etc so for example in some image you may like to extract lines or in some image you may like to extract some intensity values or in some image you may like to extract some points depending upon what you want to do you might need to divide the image into its components so that is the central problem or central idea that we will explore now in monochromatic images and remember again we will stick to monochromatic images once again so in gray scale the only component for segmentation available is intensity if it's a color image then you know that there are three components rgb then the concepts developed in monochrome segmentation can be applied to all three segments rgb it becomes a little complicated unless you are some you got you have got some experience in dealing with images so we will stick to monochrome images so basically the two concepts which are often used for segmentation are discontinuity and similarity two pixels 
they can be they can go in one segment if they are similar now what will define similarity that's a different thing but suppose once you have defined the similarity then two pixels can go two neighboring pixels can go in one segment or two neighboring pixels can go in two different segments if they have a discontinuity in the intensity values so there are two concepts if you take discontinuity the boundaries of the region are sufficiently different from each other and from the background and remember the word sufficiently is generally defined by the user so some boundaries could be weak you may want to ignore but some boundaries could be strong and you may want to include what will decide the strength of the boundary and how much would that be that is normally the criteria decided by the experimenter so discontinuity is one it easily allows the detection of boundaries you can divide the image using these boundaries and there are many edge based segmentation techniques which use this phenomena or principle so today we are basically going to talk in detail about the discontinuity based image segmentation the other type of image segmentation that we have i told you is based on similarity you partition an image into regions which are similar according to some predefined criteria so for example thresholding is one such process you can divide the threshold the image into say some bright and dark values so that we are going to talk in the next class it's called region based segmentation technique so that's slightly different so we will discuss these two central ideas in our two lectures on segmentation so here is an example my first example is this is an image the background is gray and the some part is white and i want to find the edge so i can do that by an edge segmentation technique i have found the edge and this divides the image or segments the image into two parts one inside one outside and then depending upon the need i can color them or put different intensity values in different parts here a similar image is there but this has many this is this is plain white but this is not white this has some gray values texture available so as if you use a similar technique you will get lot of edges inside okay and particularly if you do some region based thresholding then you will not get here it has been the region based thresholding inside everything has been made white here you may not get the smooth curves but because of these multiple edges you will get these zigzag edges of the main object so we are going to discuss this also towards the end of today's lecture so how do we define the segmentation mathematically straight forward if r represents the entire image then we can divide the entire image into n sub regions such that i mean those regions can be labeled as r1 r2 dash 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 rn such that if you sum all the sub regions then you get back the original image so that's one of the fundamental need or requirement of segmentation that sum of all the segments together union of all the segment together should give you your original image that is one basic requirement so it should satisfy that condition each 
segment R i should be a connected set, in a sense that there has to be a common relationship that satisfies the each segment. For example, in the previous image that I had shown, the central image, one can say that all the pixels which are white they form a region. So that region R i has all the pixels which are white. They are connected by this logic or this requirement. So each segment, there could be more than one segment in, in, in an image and all, seg all segments must be connected by some logic. In a good segmentation, if you have segmented the regions properly, then two regions should not intersect. That means the intersection of two regions must be a null set. That means the no pixel should fall in two different regions because you have already put your condition, you have already defined your condition and you have taken one pixel in one, other pixel in the other. Then this is another testing condition that the intersection of two regions should be a null set for all i and j. As I said, the condition, the Q or the property that you satisfy for a given region, it must hold true for that particular, for all the pixels in that particular region. While if you join that region with some other region, that the property must fail or it should be false because it is defined for a given region. So if it also holds for some other region, then actually your total region is the sum of the two, not the individual one. So this is also another test condition for image segmentation. So going ahead from this point, we will look at some of the simple segmentation technique. One is detection of a point. So let me show you a diagram that a similar to which we have already seen. This is an image on the top left over here. And uh, here is a line which has been drawn and along this line the intensity profile has been plotted. This kind of work you can do to in your Python that you take for keep i value fixed take j value from this end to this end, extract the intensity value, plot it versus position and you will get your graph quickly. Now you can see that it's very bright here but the intensity drops. So that is this part of the image. It's bright but intensity drops and then almost to zero and then there is a point over here. It's a sharply defined point intensity is very high so here the intensity will shoot up then come back again to zero again to zero now this is a line it is slightly broader than the point a and b it is not as bright as the point so this width is broad but it is not that bright finally this zero and this one are very bright a very low value and very high value. So these are my intensity profiles. Now we know that to get the answers we can take the first derivative and the second derivative. We are all familiar with it. In fact the second derivative can give us an isolated point. Remember this is a ramp point, flat segment, line, step, etc. So if you look at the second derivative, the second derivative remains 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 here. And you can see that there is a jump here. 6 minus 12, 6. It's a big jump. And that represents the presence of a point, isolated point. Second derivative, we are all familiar. We can use Laplacian. We have done it earlier a two-dimensional Laplacian 
remember the laplacian is a three dimensional but here we don't need the third one because the image is a two dimensional construct so we can use laplacian and we can figure out the the value of z square and then we can put a condition so if the after applying the laplacian kernel if the value that you have obtained if it is greater than some threshold the value that you obtain is represented by z after applying laplacian if it is greater than some threshold then we can take that pixel to logic 1 otherwise if it is less than the threshold then we can leave it at 0 so this is a kind of a thresholding operation that we are doing first we apply Laplacian get the value from the Laplacian which is Z and then do a thresholding so now you it's in our hand to define the threshold and define what is a point or what is not a point so here for example this is also a spike and this is also a spike but this is not so strong spike I can keep a threshold above this so that this doesn't fall in the category of category of point but this will fall so an example that I can give you is if I this is my Laplacian that we have already learnt in the earlier chapters if I apply the Laplacian to this image now here I would say that this is like a point at this point then I carry out first find out the Laplacian then carry out g of x y and making it 1 if it is greater than threshold or not and if I do that what I, what I will be left with is just one point which is 1 which is very bright and rest of the points would be dark or black because they have been pushed to zero so think about it for example those who are doing star calc star the project on the calculation of number of stars for them this could be uh, definitely a, a better technique that you simply rather than simply thresholding here simply thresholding means you will not get that control over the intensity value here you calculate the Laplacian and then threshold it so this is the one way by which you can detect points in your image now to detect a line there are line detection kernels which again we had learned earlier and let me show you once again so this is used to detect the horizontal line minus 1 minus 1 minus 1 2 2 2 minus 1 minus 1 minus 1 you can see that it is a derivative kernel once again minus plus minus so you can convolve this with your uh, image and you get all the horizontal lines appearing this is a 45 degree kernel plus 45 minus 1 minus 2 minus 1 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 2 2 2 this is minus 1 minus 1 this is a vertical line detecting kernel and this is minus 45 degree kernel so you can use different kernels to extract different angles of lines from your image so here is an example of it this is an image of a printed circuit board you know that an IC is kept in between and there are lined connection in all possible direction now you can see that these lines span in all type sites this way this way this way you can use this ready-made image to through your image j and to check the different kernels which are shown and this is an operation which is done for I think for 45 degree detection you can see that this is a very strong detection but this is not a dark this is not that strong so this is the 45 degree detection you can see that 
this line has not appeared at all vertical similarly the horizontal hasn't appeared at all now when you are looking at this i will tell you some of the peculiar peculiar characteristics you can see that if you observe carefully there is a black line and there is a white line or if you observe carefully here is a white black white so why does that appear why it is not just one black or one white so i leave that you people to think the book does give an explanation to this as well but think about it because that's very important and you can eliminate it by changing your code suitably how do the edge detection happen so we are all familiar with edges sobel edge detection etc we generally use the first derivative or derivative of the first order to figure out the edges so there are different kind of edge profiles so let me explain some of them to you for example this is a step profile how does it look like so you can see that this is a dark region this is a bright region and as you go from dark to bright there is a jump here so that's a step profile intensity jumps sharply at this so this is a step profile of an edge we can always have a ramp profile as we had seen even earlier that you have dark then intensity slowly vanishing into bright so you get a ramp constant slope sometimes maybe with little variable slope but again a ramp and thirdly a uh, and white edge between two dark regions so here you get a dark you get a bright you get a dark so this is called a roof edge this is also a profile you can have different profiles if you apply your laplacian or first order derivative to different ones you will get different results so how what kind of results are expected let's have a look so i'm taking a ramp image over here this is the ramp intensity here the it is dark here it is bright and intensity increases so in this region intensity is increasing now i take the first derivative first derivative slope is constant so here to here slope is zero the first derivative is zero from here to here slope is positive first derivative is a positive constant again the deriv line is horizontal the derivative is zero it drops to zero so this is how it changes what about the second derivative so if you look at the second derivative the second derivative will be will be a positive spike here and it will be a negative spike here and there will be some crossing zero crossing happen now you can see why do you get those two lines in the second derivative i go back to this most of the line detection kernels are laplacian kernels which are second order derivative and you can see that they come in bright and dark and bright lines so at at this for example from dark to bright there will be a one spike and then from bright to dark there can be a another spike so typically the second order derivative will give you two spikes so normally professionally if you want to do the edge detection you have to be clear in your mind i'm not saying line detection then you have to be clear in your mind that you want to keep the positive spike of the calculation or negative and then you can always put a one line of code in your python saying that if the second order derivative is less than 0 then you set it to 0 then only this spike would remain 
so yeah the going ahead from this point what happens if there is noise present then what happens to the edges so noise will generally degrade the edges more the noise present more will be the degradation so for example this is a gradient again once again this is first derivative and these are the two spikes but if there is some nominal amount of noise is there then what happens is in your first derivative you get noise fluctuations and in the second derivative also remember the second derivative will enhance those fluctuations further become they, they all will become stronger of course you can still see the spikes edge spikes are seen but noise is also there so recall my first opening image for today's lecture or the first image that i had shown where the central region was textured filled with noise the detecting edges will always be challenging but issue is if the edges are sorry if the noise is very dominant as in this case then the noise edges become stronger than the image edges and it will be very difficult to extract the image image edge the edge that matters to us it will become very difficult to detect so that is what typically happens so you can always take a line intensity profile and find out the image noise so typically a noise reduction is a very important step in fact the three steps performed for edge detection is first step is image smoothening or noise reduction so if you have got a noisy image and you have to extract the edges then the first you need to do is that figure out how much amount of noise it is what kind of noise it is remember we have done noise chapter so there are different kinds of noise for example you have uh, gaussian erlang constant uniform noise salt and pepper noise figure out what kind of noise you are having and from that you first do the noise reduction uh, algorithm to a sufficient extent remember the noise will eliminate the real edges also so to be careful especially in noisy images and then you detect the edge points what are your edges and then you do the edge localization for example like if you get bright and dark edges both then you eliminate one so that you extract one edge only so you can do these three steps to figure out the edges the for edge detection the process that we use is called gradient or the first order derivative so gradient of an image is defined as del of f and it can be defined in two directions x directions df by dx and y directions df by dy remember that we have already done this in an earlier class i think we did it in chapter 3 now if for example and now when you calculate these gradients for all the points then you get a vector gradient vector at each component so for example if it's a gray part and this is the bright if there is an edge here then df by dx will calculate the difference between this pixel and this pixel df by dy will calculate the difference between this and this so you get a gradient vector two components of the gradient vector one along the x axis and one along the y axis then you can get your gradient vector composition by using the pythagoras theorem because they are in two perpendicular direction so the gradient vector the magnitude of the gradient vector will be root of x gradient square plus y gradient square and the angle at which it will be pointing with respect to the x axis and that is alpha 
can be obtained by tan inverse gy by gx so that's our standard formula here is the actual working so alpha will be this angle this is the edge this is the edge direction gradient vector that you will obtain remember gx will be calculated along this side gy will be calculated along this side gradient vector that you will obtain will be along this way and angle alpha is going to be this one from the vertical so that is how you will calculate the gradient standard gradient operators we are familiar the most simplistic gradient operators are these minus 1 plus 1 for vertical gradients minus 1 minus 1 for horizontal gradients so very simple take an Im image apply these two and you will get your answer very immediately so that is to check a gradient or to check a presence of an edge in an image this is one of the straightforward tools available however if you want to calculate the gradients at 45 degree and minus 45 degree then you need to modify these into this form minus 1 0 0 1 0 minus 1 1 0 we know that these are called Roberts cross gradients they are named after the person who designed them for the first time these are called Roberts cross gradients then we have learned from our experience that implementing these kernels about a central pixel is going to be challenging here the origin has to be fixed here or here they are not symmetrical as far as their implementation by the method of convolution is concerned so we use symmetrical kernels this one so this is a modification so minus one goes up one goes down put a line of zero put a line of zero so this becomes a three by three kernel and very easy to implement you can put the origin at the center put it on your image pixel create this window or a kernel do your convolution get your answer this is what is called previt filter or previt operator and then you finally have your Sobel operator which as we have learned earlier also that along with along with finding the edges it also offers some smoothening and remember we just saw that the noise can distort your edge detection process so if there is a noise if there are some noise elements present in the image then Sobel becomes a slightly better filter to work with. So I'm going to show you some example with the Sobel to end this lecture. This is an image. This image you can see that has uh, all kind of edges, horizontal, vertical, and this is horizontal. All window bars are horizontal. This is horizontal. And then it has at almost at 45 degree this way and at some angle this side so all kinds of edges are there I am first applying a Sobel to find out the horizontal images so if I apply this you can see that I get this form now here you will find that all the lines which are horizontal for example take this this is so dull here but this is so dominant here all the window parapets this one this one this one they're all so bright but all the verticals for example this is a strong vertical line which is almost invisible it's not seen although I leave you to think again that this is bright but what makes a dark strip in between and then bright at the two ends so that I leave it you to think but overall you can see that all horizontal lines are amplified they have become stronger by applying the Sobel this is clearly an image with noise building structure has lot of noise so Sobel is a more suited filter then I can use the another Sobel vertical to find out the vertical edges 
and that is straightforward. You will find that all horizontal edges are gone, all vertical edges are amplified, they look very strong. So this will be my G of Y, earlier one was my G of X. So I have my vertical gradient, I have my horizontal gradient, both the gradients available. I can calculate my final gradient by using these two and using the square root formula. So this is my final gradient image. All the gradients, wherever there's intensity change, all has been strongly represented in this one. As a case study, you can check. For example, here it is not so clear that an edge exists but here it clearly exists. The roof has edges which are clearly visible in this image. So on and so forth. So you can see that basically we have learned all these ideas earlier. This is just another revision and these are all image segmentation techniques which are used by using the principle that two pixels differ each other by some value. Then you can take first derivative, second derivative, etc. to figure out the different edges and hence different segments. So next class we will talk about the region based segmentation technique or similarity based segmentation technique. In fact, the technique that we are going to talk in detail is the technique of thresholding. So we can stop here. Thank you. And we will meet in the Google Meet if there is any need of a discussion.